When retiming the gear racks on a Schwintex slide-out, we will need to first fully retract the room. We can begin removing the first few sets of screws, securing the top and bottom gear racks to the side of the room. If there is a third gear rack, be sure to include it in the removal and remounting process. Be careful while removing screws to not strip out the mounting holes. If one should become stripped out, we will need to drill a new hole one inch to the side on the gear rack and seal up the previous hole on the side of the coach to prevent water intrusion. Once we have removed the rear screws, the next step will be to extend the room out until about 8 inches remain inside to expose our remaining screws and the columns holding the system in place. With the room run out, we want to support the room with a jack or lift. The support will take the weight of the room and allow for an easier removal and more accurate install of our column. Once the room is supported and in position, cut a 2x4 to match the gap between the T-molding and the sidewall and place the 2x4 on top of the slide room standing on its edge. It's a good idea to use a couple of rags to help prevent scratches. Next, you want to reach in to disconnect the wiring harness from the motor. Once that is completed, carefully use a utility knife to cut the caulk bead along the edge of the side column. With the caulk bead no longer supporting the column, we now need to free up the column for removal by removing the remaining screws, securing it to the side wall of the unit. Again, just like with the gear racks, we want to be careful not to strip out the mounting holes. If you notice one is stripped out or weak, the same process applies here as for the gear racks. Next, to make removing the column easier, you can use an old spare wire harness with the motor connection still intact to create a jumper harness. Cut it to your desired length and strip the red and black wires. Connect the harness to the motor and then use a drill battery to retract the room. You may need to determine which polarity actuates the motor in the correct direction. Be sure that your support for the room is stable for this. The slide column should slide away from the side of the unit. You can disconnect your harness once it is free. With the column free, the only thing still holding the system in place is the remaining screws. Remove the remaining screws from the top and bottom gear racks. You may need to use a putty knife to pry the gear racks free. Be careful while doing this to do it without damaging the finish of the room. To remove the system, pivot the gear racks past the T-molding and slide it free. Remove the motor retention screw to allow the system to be taken apart. Now that the motor is free, slide the motor up and out of the column. The coupler will likely come out with it. With the motor and coupler pulled free, you can now slide the gear axe out and inspect them. While looking at them, look down the length to see what the wear pattern looks like. Look for any damage to the gear track or any damage that would necessitate the replacement of the gear racks themselves. If you notice any dirt, debris, or residue left on the gear racks, take this time to clean them. We will start timing by inserting the bottom gear rack first. You can identify this gear rack by the flange on the bottom side. Insert the gear rack fully into the column. Next, install the top gear rack into the column. You will notice that if you try to push it through, the gear racks do not line up. To adjust this, twist the torque shaft back towards you to raise the gear racks. Continue to do this until both gear racks are bouncing at the top, and then push them down into position. Double check your efforts with a tape measure to be certain your gear racks are timed properly, or you will have to uninstall the system and try it again later to fix it. With a spare shipping angle in place to help the gear racks remain parallel, pivot the column assembly into place and slide the assembly up until the bottom gear rack flange is flush against the floor of the slide out. Once you have verified the placement, secure the gear racks to the side of the slide out. Be sure to check that the gear racks are parallel by measuring between the top and bottom gear racks at both the front and rear. They need to be parallel within an eighth of an inch. If they are not parallel, remove the necessary screws on the top rack to adjust the gear rack accordingly. If your new location is too near the previous screw holes, drill new screw holes in the gear rack, offset one inch from the previous ones, and seal up the old hole locations to prevent water intrusion. Once you have the gear rack secured and the parallels confirmed, remove the front shipping angle. There should be a screw at both the top and bottom. To reinstall the column, we will once again be utilizing our jumper harness to connect the motor. Once connected, you will again use a drill battery to actuate the column inward until it is seated properly. 
Be careful when doing this to not pinch your wire harness between the column and the sidewall. Before securing the column in place, measure from the face of each gear rack to the edge of the column to ensure that the appropriate spacing is maintained. The spacing should be two and a half inches, plus or minus an eighth of an inch. If you do not do this correctly now, the room may not operate correctly and damage to the system could occur. Once your spacing is confirmed, re-secure the column to the side of the unit. Again, we want to be sure not to strip out any of the mounting holes and repair as previously stated if one is damaged. With positioning of the system finished, re-secure the remaining screws to the gear racks. This includes any inside the unit and any that have slid to the outside of the unit. If a screw hole cannot be reached at this time, wait until the motor is reconnected and then move the room until the screw can be installed. Once the system is secured in place, reconnect your motor harness inside of the coach. Ensure when you do so that the wire placement will not be pinched or damaged during operation. Now you can lower and remove the jack or lift being used to support the room while the column was removed. Last, we will test the operation of the room and ensure it moves in and out. The room will likely be out of sync after removing and reinstalling our column assemblies. To fix this, we will follow our standard resyncing process. We will run the room in until it stops, and then back it off and run it in again until it is fully retracted. This could take several cycles if the room is off enough from side to side. Once the room is fully retracted, we will extend it 1 to 2 inches and then fully retract it again and hold the retract button for 3 seconds after it stops moving to ensure that the motors have finished adjusting. We will repeat this process until both sides of the room are stopping their motors at the same time.